Okay, as part two of this video, let's now discuss how I create this picture and how I create those little clickable links over certain parts of the picture that aren't at first visible, but as the students hover over. Um, and this is applicable to any sort of activity, so I've used this technique um, for several things. There are two tools you can use to do this. Um, you can do this in Google Slides. I prefer Google Drawings. I just think it's easier, and that's fine. Um, this is the standard page setup, just so you know. Um, but if you want to change it, under File, there is a Page Setup option. You can make it custom, wider screened. Um, I mean, so you can kind of adjust this particular uh, width and height to anything you want. Okay, you could do one of a couple of options. You could simply Google some images you want, place them on the background, copy and paste. I'm just gonna use the direct search site, so search the web. Um, the good thing about this is that these are licensed free, um, so you can actually use these for all sorts of activities without any licensing issues when you go this route. Um, so this is one of the benefits. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is set up the back of the room. So I usually just do something like wall and floor, like as a black background. You could do classroom. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different options here. Um, so you can simply scroll through. Um, if you want side walls, I tend to simply like just this background wall. Um, and once you do that, there'll be like a little insert button down here at the bottom just click on this little insert. Uh, once it is placed inside of here, you can simply resize. And I know this is a slightly different picture than the one I used before. You can scroll as much as you want and decide which pictures you're going to use um, and which background. Um, so many options, so many colors, right? If you really scroll through, you can kind of have your pick. All right, but I set this nice little background. And for this, you don't need any particular picture. It is gonna go up against the back and everything we lay on this will be on top of it. Um, so this one, kind of just pick your favorite picture um, for, for a classroom or for your office setting. All right, now I'm going to search um, using the word transparent, or you could possibly use PNG if you want, which ha tends to have more transparent. But I'm gonna do transparent uh, desk with computer. All right, so now I tend to not want things that are angled, but again, if you chose a different uh, room setup, you could do that. I chose this one last time. Um, I happen to just like that little picture, but if you really want um, the emoji in there, you certainly can add somebody sitting at the desk. So it really just depends on the scene that you're going for. I'm going to go with this one. I thought it was a decent setup. Click insert on here and it will insert the picture. The big thing about transparent is that the image itself lays on top of the room, but it allows the background to kind of peek through all the little components, right? If you chose a solid image, you would basically have like a white square in the background and you would, you would lose all of this background image. Um, you can resize all of this, right? So make it as big, as small, make it, you know, kind of fit your space. Uh, maneuver it around. I added as well a transparent uh, file cabinet. Right, so again, you've got your options. You can scroll through. Uh, again, this one's cute, but there's a nice little blue one. You have your multi options. Again, you can scale these up or down. You can see there's loads and loads of options. Um, you would not want to choose something like this with the back, black background um, because it would just show up as black. Uh, but certainly kind of whatever scene it is you're trying to set, um, sort of pick and choose. And the more particular you are about... Um, your wording and your titles, right, the better images that sort of pop up. Some of that just kind of takes takes practice. Again, this is huge, so I'm going to downsize it a bit. Okay. Okay, move it around so that it looks like it's kind of part of the scene here, and that it's an appropriate size for the room, and that the wheels look like they're sort of lined up here. And some of this just takes a few moments of playing, right? 
um, to get this to make a nice little scene. So I'm not going to make this perfect as I'm really just trying to show you the idea. I added some wall art. I added some books. I simply just Google transparent bookshelves. Um, the only thing that I did on the first one that was not transparent was this little diagram. And because it's a medical office, I chose um, just to chart and I chose something particularly with the white background so it really mimicked much more um, that chart so if you want to do art on the background I would choose that not transparent option um, here just just so you are aware that's how I got that one um, but the rest of these had transparency so that the background case okay, sort of peeked through Okay, let me add this door. I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so I have space for a door. I'll make this just a little bit smaller so I have space for a door. Um, move this over a little bit, right? I should probably line this up where it would actually be sitting on the floor somewhere. Okay, doesn't look like it's uh, hovering in, in the middle of nowhere. So now let me, and I'm going to show you, and I think I did this as an office door. What you are going to get are a lot of actual office doors. So in this case, because I'm going with more of a cartoon look, I would add the words cartoon, clip art, uh, something of that nature so that the doors I get um, kind of fit my scene more. And that really just depends on what it is that you are looking for. Uh, I see this one here that I kind of like. This one's closed and that's fine with me, um, as opposed to the last one. Not a big deal, right? We're just going to resize. And if you want to change the width, and the height, right at different intervals, you just use these sides. Uh, make sure that the door, right, lines up at the bottom. Okay. So let's make a solid door here. Okay, so there's a, a decent sized door. I'd probably make it a little bit taller in real life. It wouldn't be such a squat door. Um, but adjust it until you're happy, right? I'm really just trying to show you what this demonstrates. Um, as opposed to the absolute perfect picture right off the top. Okay, make sure that the door jam lines up at the bottom. All right, now I did want to label this door so that my students sort of knew what it is they were clicking into. So I did that by going into the shape tool, and I simply just chose, right, a simple rectangle. You can choose any shape you desire. Um, I just went with good old rectangle, put a placard on the door. I don't love this light blue, so I'm going to change this to white. Okay, which leaves this nice little white background. Uh, this little T is the text box. So I'm going to add a little text box to this. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I just happen to know that won't fit. And I want this all aligned center. Um, so I'm just going to label this as the, oop, as the supply closet. Okay, you can, again... If you want this on two lines, if you want a different font, you simply do that like you would any other um, sort of adjustment, right? I mean, you can change fonts, you can change sizes, you can highlight it, you could have changed the background color, you can create borders, right, just like you can with any other uh, diagram. But for the sake of today, I'm going to keep this simple. Okay, what I want to show you next, um, and I am going to put office in here, just label this. Okay, so what I want to do next is create the linkable images. Okay, so what I do first is, again, I choose that shape, and I'm going to choose a rectangle. You could choose circles depending on what it is you're covering, but what you're looking to do is basically cover an area. So the first thing I want, wanted them to click into was the drawers. So I'm going to cover up this set of drawers. And at first you're going to see it's this nice solid blue, but that's okay because really as I'm laying out my images and my clickable links, what I want to happen is that I see kind of where it is. So if they click anywhere on the drawer, okay, because this will disappear in a little bit. If they click anywhere on the drawer, uh, what's going to happen is they'll go to this particular link. So now that you've created the image, there's this little link button that says insert link, and you will see underneath it, it asks you to copy and paste a link. This link does not have to be one you created. It could be external to say a totally different website that you just find on the web. You would copy and paste the link into this website. But I have something where I want them to lead where that drawer goes, and that is the second web page I created. It's got nothing in it yet, but there is a little get the link. So I'm going to copy that link and paste it here. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the door. So I'm just going to make sure that this 
This rectangle is slightly larger than the door. Um, again, let's edit this link because I don't want the drawer set up in here, right? But I do want, since this is the supply room, I want the link that will lead them to this page where I'm going to place something else. And I know right now there's nothing there yet, but we're going to create that. Okay, so right now I've got the supply room set for the door. And on this, I've got it set to write this this to the drawer. So if they click over these, these blue text boxes, okay, it's going to lead them to whatever website it is you create. And again, could be external, internal, okay, whatever it is you prefer. Again, you can do this as many times anywhere all over this picture that you want. I'm just choosing these two places to make it simple. But we don't want them to see these links, right? So now we've got to take away the color so that the links still exist without um, creating this issue of the student being able to see it. And so simply if you're on one of the images, and I wait till the end to do this just so that if I play sometimes 10 of these links here, say for a breakout game, um, you know, just making sure I'm not overlapping or, you know, that things, things are very clear where they're placed to me initially. But you want to go to this fill color and make it transparent. And now the inside is transparent and you actually see the object. But if you click off, you still see this little box. And unless I have placed it perfectly, that little black box doesn't belong there. So what I do is I also go to the border and I make it totally transparent. Okay, for this one, I'm going to come here, make the color transparent. And again, I don't want the black border, so it's not obvious. So I also make the border transparent. And now what you've got are these hidden boxes that unless the student knows exactly where to click on that, okay, it is not going to be obvious. Okay, in order to embed this in your website, you do have to make sure you click share. If you don't click share, right, it's going to be private when the student or someone else goes to this website. Um, so click share, and I just want it, they're not going to be editing this link, so I'm not sharing it with people, but at this bottom it says change to anyone with this link can view this image. So that as you embed it in the website, okay, um, they can view this image. So I'm going to click done, and let me switch back over to the web page. Okay, so this is my home page link, so what I want to do is click insert. I save this in my Google Drive. I just go to Recent, it happens to be the most recent thing I've created, so I'm going to double click it, and it will place it on the page. I'm going to get this out of my way, I just think it's easier to see without it. Not the size I want, not a problem. Okay, you can make it wider, bigger, I mean things can still be totally adjusted from here, right, to make it so that you are happy. If you want to view it, to see how students will view it, if you want it further down the page, um, just click this little preview icon, and you can actually view it in computer mode, tablet mode, right, what it looks like in a tablet, what it looks like in a phone. Okay, so you can actually view it, so if you want to create more space, right, in between these, that is totally up to you. But now you can see that you get this original picture, okay, that we created, and if you hover over those two areas where you don't see anything now, but if you hover over the drawer area, it pops open the drawer. Or if you hover over, right, you can see it changes the supply closet. It takes you there. Okay, so for the next video, I'm going to show you how we create um, the next set of pictures um, on the next two pages. So we'll go through those ones a little bit more quickly. Um, and then I'll show you the thing I use to create those little plus signs. And I'm sorry, my doggy is a little whiny in the background. Um, so hang on for video number three.